It is time for everybody's favorite lightning round. Let's do this, Kelly. <laughs> when your producer was a hair metal fan in the 80s. Hi, Pot. Have you met the kettle? <laughs> There's the music. All right, let's do this. All right. First question. Oh, so we say this lightning round is about kids and parenting. And I don't know what's coming. Nope. <laughs> you know, this, I always feel like we're going to get canceled. Let's do this. First question. How do we decide if and when our preteen is ready for their own phone? Um, the answer is no. Ta-da. <laughs> that's, my, that's my answer, man. I, no, no preteen should have a phone. It's in my opinion. I agree with you on preteen. Yes. No preteen should have a phone, period. Um, if a teenager needs a phone, um, it would have to be something that is so highly restricted. There's some special phones out there, and I don't know enough about the individual companies, but it would have to be something that my kids cannot have unfettered access to AI and the internet and all these insane opinions about all this insane stuff. Everything from sexuality to religion to whatever. We complain like psychopaths about schools. What are they teaching in them schools? And then we give our kids freaking phones. Are you kidding me? What's the matter with you? I would much rather have a teacher tell my child something that I disagree with. And then my kid come home and talk to me about it. Then have the internet. Millions of unfiltered opinions. No, we got some blockers on our phones. No, you don't. Your kids are smarter than you. That's my thought on phones. Ta-da. All right, then. <laughs> Back to being canceled. All right, second question. <sighs> my job causes me to work long hours. How can I make up for the lost time and connect with my kids when I am home? That's a great question. So, one, I hope that there's some cyclical seasonality to this, that this isn't all of the time. 24-7, 365. So uh, my brother-in-law works on the railroad. So that means he's gone at strange hours. That also means when he's home, he gets up a little bit early and he takes his kids to school. He drives them to school. He picks them up from school. He goes to performances when he's home. So um, same with me. When I'm on the road, I'm on the road, I'm on the road. Um, when I'm writing books and I have to hole up in a hotel for a week and get something done, like I miss my, I miss my kids. I then do the best I can to make it up in other places. Um, on my schedule, and again, I, I know I've got some privilege here, but I don't miss I don't miss kids um, like theater performance. I don't, I'm not going to miss a play. I'm not going to miss a choir performance. My daughter got a part as the big rooster in her upcoming something or other for first graders. I'm not going to miss that. So that's going to cost me money to show up to that, and it's worth every single penny of it. I'll also say this. Last night was one of the most extraordinary moments of my life. At 3 a.m., about 3.15 in the morning, my daughter woke woke me and my wife up. She came in the bedroom, woke us up, and said she couldn't sleep. And oh, I'm so tired. I got so many deadlines. I'm just out of gas. But I heard in her voice this deep frustration. Like, I just want to be asleep, and I can't. And yeah, I have, I've struggled through insomnia my whole life, and I knew it. I heard it. I felt it. So I got up. I'm going to get choked up here. Hold on. I got up, and I went and got an apple. She told me she was hungry. I can't sleep. Whatever. And I used our little apple slicer and I got a plate and I went and sat on her bed and we ate apples at 3, 15, 3, 20 in the morning till about four. And we laughed so hard. And she told me about this dumb boys in her class and all. it was a really precious time. And so sometimes we think, how do I show up in these moments? We got to go to Disneyland. We got to, no, dude, eat apples with your kid on her bed at 3, 30 in the morning. She'll tell that story at your funeral. So, all right, Kelly. I keep going over the little dinger. Sorry. That's okay. All right. My wife left and I'm a single dad of two daughters. Ugh, what do I do when they start to reach puberty? How do I approach the sensitive topics with them? I want to desensitize puberty. It's like if you're a dad and you can't talk to your daughter about your peer, her period, like that's, that's on you. It's a, it's her body. It's a natural thing. It's like not a weird, strange, Oh God, shut up. Get over yourself. Have the conversations. If you don't know how to have the conversations, get with um, some women that you trust and ask, hey, how should I have this conversation with my daughter? What's ways that you had it in your life that you didn't have it in your life? That So number one, I want to take away any weird stuff, whether it's sons or daughters. Um, my wife will be able to have 
particular experiential conversations that are different than I can have with my daughter, 100%. There's going to be conversations that they need to go just have by themselves. Awesome. But I don't need to be in my house like, oh, periods. That's just, it's part of it. Or you're growing up. It's time to go get bras. Like that's life. And so making that as weird as possible, as not weird as possible, not making your daughters ever feel like they have something to apologize about their bodies or they're somehow broken or weird. That's number one. Number two, get a couple of adult women in their lives that they can trust, whether that's an aunt, whether that's um, a teacher, somebody that they trust, even offer to put some money on the table. Hey, would you take my daughter to dinner? Well, I'm trying to build relationships with other women that I trust because she's going to need people to call this because she's not going to always want to call her dad with stuff like that. Um, and so have set up, uh, curate relationships with other adults in her life, in their lives that, uh, they trust. All right. We're pregnant with our first and I'm scared it's going to change our relationship. What can we do to keep <laughs> things the same between us? I know. Bless oh, them. bless, bless your hearts. It's going to change a hundred percent of everything. All of it will be different now. Every bit of it is different. So. You have two avenues ahead of you. You can know that everything's going to be different. So we're going on an adventure together, arm in arm. And we're going to reimagine sex and we're going to reimagine entertainment. And we're going to reimagine time and calendars and work, all that stuff. Or you can almost guarantee the end of your relationship by constantly comparing it to what it used to be and trying to drag it backwards and make that happen again. Because it won't. It won't. Everything you knew is over now. The way your husband or wife looks, uh, uh, acts, but like all, the, everything's different now. Everything's different. So bless your sweet little souls. Um, you can't because it's all going to change. It's all going to change. All right. We can't get our teenager to come out of his room. What can we do to <laughs> encourage him to participate in family activities like eating dinner as a family or church on Sunday? Oh, geez. Okay. Anytime somebody tells me they can't fill in the blank with their kid, I always throw a flag on that. You can unhook the computer and throw it in the freaking garbage. You can take the door off the hinges. You can take all of the desks and chairs out of your kid's room. What you want to do is you want to have some magic hack or some magic pill so that you don't look like the bad guy. You don't look like you're intervening, but that your son will magically just follow a trail of, of gummy bears out of his room into the family, whatever. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to get your kid out of his room. That's number one. Number two, often kids don't like to play games with parents because parents aren't fun to be around. They're the worst. They're always criticizing and judging and trying to bow up and they can't, they can't lose at a board game without getting their feelings hurt or all mad. So be somebody that your kid wants to be around. Don't be an annoying pain in the butt adult who always has a lesson ready to go and always like be somebody that you'd want to hang out with and make some of these things. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, my dad told me, if you don't want to go to the church where we all go, great. Faith is important to me and our family lineage. Go somewhere. Go somewhere. I'll drop you off. And I didn't realize at the time what a big deal that was. Um, but what he was saying was, y your faith, you having deep roots in this thing called belief into something bigger than you are is more important than making than our little picture of a pretty family um, on Sunday mornings at some church than some Olin Mills photo. That's, that's when your kid sees you being honest and authentic, not using him as a part of a performance. And so if your kids won't come out of the room, you can get them out. It's just going to depend on how much you love them. Uh, we do the thing. So we all go to church together on Sunday, but uh, my son goes to a different church for a uh, youth group on Wednesday night with mm -hmm. some friends and he loves it. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah. All right. How do you explain death to young children? Whew. I mean, that's, that's a tough question. Is there any get? No. The, 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 the way David Kessler explains it that I love and what I've used repeatedly is when I'm talking to a kid about a funeral, I will say something along the lines of, you know how when we celebrate somebody's birthday, 
It's, a, it's our way of saying we love you and we see you and we're celebrating you. A funeral is the same way. It's us telling them that we love you. We always will love you and we're going to miss you. And so I try to contextualize that ceremony. Um, I'll just give you the two examples because it's such a broad ranging question. With my 13-year-old, when we talked about, um, we had the Nashville shooting here with my 13-year-old, um, we went out for a walk and I talked a lot more open with him about what he had heard, about what actually happened, about the proto safety protocols, about how the SWAT officers responded. Because I've done SWAT trainings before and I've had SWAT officers come get me. And um, so I, I was able to just give him a play-by-play. And then also I was really clear about the statistics. It's probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. But it does. With my daughter, we went and got on the trampoline and I laid down on my, on my stomach. I got eye level with her. So she knew, her body knew, this is not a, um, this is not dad lecturing. This is not dad being scary. This is dad being with her. And so there's something really important about body position and um, uh, eye level so that her body uh, regulates itself. It gets still and it gets slow. And I asked her, did you hear about what happened? And I let her tell me what she knew. And I confirmed some, she knew a lot more than I thought she did. Um, but we're just at a place now where we can't hide this stuff from kids anymore. So talking about death is really important. And here's the other important part about talking about death. Let your kids see you weep. Let your kids see you be upset. Let your kids see you be really, really sad because they have those same feelings too. And they need to see you have those experiences so they don't feel crazy. They don't tr learn at a young age to stuff all their feelings down and try to hide them because that's what mom and dad do. No, man. Let your kids see you cry. Let your kids see you be really, really scared. Um, that's a gift. All right. Our son plays video games. It's where he connects with friends. Should we limit his playtime each day? Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Um, I don't have any good data off the top of my head. I wish I did. I don't have any data on, like, here's too much and here's too little. Um, I can tell you my house, I broke down. And got a Nintendo Switch for my son for Christmas. I know. I did. I did. Um, and he gets one hour a week on Saturdays. When all the other... It's, it's purely a reward thing. Um, so that's how I do it. Um, academics are important in our house. Connectivity with our family is really important in our house. And everybody participating. Like my son does chores. My daughter does chores. Me and uh, my wife do chores. And so the... The connectivity in our home is more important than connectivity with friends. And um, also, I don't, I, he's, I, he's not allowed to do it online. So that's a whole different story there. Um, what, have you all drawn boundaries in your house? It has changed, kind of ebbed and flowed over the years. Um, right now, Nathan is allowed to play until 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, because by the time we're usually not home, um, and then... That's usually about the time I'm working on dinner, so he has to come and sit in the, the kitchen, and that's where he works on homework. Gotcha. And if he doesn't have homework, then you just sit – he just – we talk yeah, or whatever. Go. Yeah. Okay. Um, but he's allowed to play until – but he plays usually, you know, even – because he plays online now because he plays with um, with other kids, you know. But I always walk in, who's that, who's that, who's that. And, um, and there's been a couple of times where it was like, I don't know that person. And that does not sound like a kid. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. of course he's 17 now. So none of them sound like kids anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but we know who all the people that he's playing with, but, um, we've just put a time limit on it mm -hmm. and that's kind of a, um, non negotiable. Yeah. I, th I think a, a broader conversation that families need to have is why is this more appealing than being connected with us. And that's just a, it's, it's a, just a helpful framing question. So as you get to be 17, there's some natural, I want to be around my friends. Right. And that's, that. and we had to come to the understanding of, we were like, well, go outside, play with your friends, do this. That's not what they do. Yeah, exactly. It's just not. Now he drives now. So he and his friends, well, they'll go to dinner or go hang out, but it's just not where they are now. It's different. And so we we had to kind of come to that realization that this is where he hangs out with his friends. I've, I've, I've had to not be an idiot, is what I would say. Yeah, because so, there's that, well, like, do you not want me to have friends? I mean, that's, that's the exact conversation I have. Like, like, I don't think you understand, Dad. Like, I'm, I'm on the outside of every conversation here. And I love that 
I know how to care for sick chickens. And I know that I can work a lawnmower and a small tractor and I can, I, I know how to harvest a deer. But man, I just want to sit at lunch and talk to my friends about There's Zelda. room for all of it as that's long right. as it's in the right place. That's right. And the priorities, right? Yes. And I think maybe that's the most important thing. Our family, like we're very clear how low on the totem pole of a priority that is. That is pure. That is that is marshmallows and gummy candy um, on the back end of a healthy meal, or as a way to cope. Yeah, which is I was how I say, used really. <laughs> that's where you're going with it. <laughs> I last night again. I, listen, kettle. last night in. Uh, I was walking through. Oh, I was feeding the dogs, and I saw a bag of miniature marshmallows, and I just took a handful. I'm hanging on, man. Hanging on. All right, next we're gonna, question. We're going to get there. All right, next question. Let's do it. As our kids get older, I've noticed our parenting styles are different. It causes tensions between us and confusion for the kids. What do we do? Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. And when you talk about this, don't go, with, again, off-site. Get out of your house. Go somewhere. You're planning to spend a few hours. Spend the money. Even if you don't have it, spend the money. and. Don't sit down and say, hey, you're letting those kids run all over. That's not what we're going to do. Because then your spouse has to fight you. Because you just you just punched first. I know we both want to make amazing adults. And I don't like how I'm showing up right now for the kids. And I'm hearing them be really disrespectful to me. And I'm seeing them be disrespectful to other people. We got to come together on our parenting stuff and I've got to put my stuff on the table first. I'm struggling. What are you struggling with? Or are you struggling with anything? And hopefully there's some, <laughs> your, your spouse has some ability to be reflective and say like, yeah, I don't know what to do here. I'm struggling with this, but let's reimagine this thing together. If you get into an accusation war, then your parents, parents are going to pick sides. Kids can smell that a mile away. They're going to pick sides and it's just going to be this divided house. Don't do that. How do you balance 30 second hugs and asking your daughter's permission to touch her? Um, I default to her saying no. So her autonomy over her body trumps my um, uh, my understanding of the importance of skin to skin contact. I will say this. Um, I think I talked about this on the show, but my wife called out several months ago um, this idea of if you weren't so hard to be around, if you weren't so electric all the time, if you weren't always lecturing all the time and saying, like, why are you wearing those shoes? Why you got that shirt on? Why are you doing? If you would be fun to be around, um, that would change. And I tell you what, I've worked really hard on that and it has been transformative in my house. And so it, again, using what happened last night, I could have said, go to bed. It's three o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll deal with it in the morning. I just got up. And for those of you wondering, yes, I ended up missing my workout. I skipped my workout. I barely made it to work. And um, I'll be chasing deadlines all day. But I spent an hour on my daughter's bed, not even an hour, 40 minutes, eating apples, chilling, listening to her. She told me stories. Um, man, the hugs on the back end of that will come. The hugs on that will come. But I'm always going to d default to she is chiefly in charge of her body. All right, last question. And by the way, that also is for uncles, grandparents, everybody, everybody. Why don't you go hug granddad? No, if she says no, then she says no. What's, an what's another way you could tell granddad that you're glad that he came? What's another way you could tell uncle whoever? Because her body is saying, that guy's not safe and I don't want to hug him. Cool. All right, go for, go for it. All right, last question. My daughter does competitive gymnastics. She wants to quit but I think she should keep at it because she's talented and she could get a scholarship. Do I make her keep competing? Cool, man. I'm going to speak my concerns out loud. Okay. On its face. No, you should not continue to make your kids keep competing at a highly competitive level with this imaginary idea that um, your kid's going to get a scholarship especially, and you've got to be really honest with yourself, and most parents can't do this, especially, um, we, used to call it, we used to call it soccer mom scholarship in, when I was working in higher ed. Here's why. I could give a student 
a ten thousand um, dollar. My my college could give no scholarships, and I'll make up a number here, a fake number, because clearly this isn't true. And our total tuition was ten thousand dollars for the year. College down the street, their tuition was twenty thousand dollars, but they would give your kid um, a one thousand dollar JV soccer scholarship. So the total out of pocket is nineteen grand on this school, ten grand on this school. Ninety five times out of a hundred, we lost that student to the more expensive school, so that parents could go around and tell everybody that their kid was on a soccer scholarship. It's all part of the uh, enrollment game. And so if you want to be the parent of a scholarship athlete, you need to check yourself because you're about to lose your kid. I will also say, as a youngster, I tried to quit several times. I was a big, te- big Super 5A Texas high school football player, and I went to, track, uh, went to college on a track scholarship. I tried to quit both. And my parents said no, but they let my brother quit. And I remember challenging them on that as I was older. And they said, y'all are very different people. You needed the structure. You needed other adults because you weren't listening to us to push you harder than you thought you needed to be pushed. And it wasn't for scholarships. It It was my parents saw a developmental need that I needed that they couldn't provide. And so they wouldn't let me. My brother, on the other hand, was it was amazing like he was a structured human being he still is he's amazing we're very different people and so they were able to look at him and say he's not going to need the same structure here and here's the catch the the kicker um i let my kid quit one sport but he had to choose something else to do he can't just sit at home and do nothing so cool you do not have to do competitive this anymore what is the sport and what is the instrument you're gonna you're gonna choose and so if they are like, oh, I thought I could just do nothing and hang out with my friends, that's not going to happen. You got to do something. It doesn't have to be competitive, this or that, or this or that. And mom and dads, you can always, like, oh. what I saw on Instagram the other day, it was uh, every dad thinks, if I just worked a little bit harder as a high schooler, I could have made the NFL. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. You know how I know? You couldn't. So don't put that on your kids. If you just worked a little harder, you can go pro. They're not going pro. They're not going pro. Um, and so give them some peace there. Is that good? That was great. Cool. Nice work.